Okay, this is a, a DSD lecture for Monday, the 19th of October. So, uh, and what we're going to talk about today uh, is uh, floating point numbers, particularly the uh, IEEE 754 standard. That is unit 7 in, uh, in your notes. We didn't start it uh, last week because I reviewed uh, uh, the whole time for the, for the theory test and hopefully everybody's taken that. Uh, I probably told you I'd work the test uh, today, but I'm not going to do that today. I think I'll wait till Wednesday. I want to look at the results and make sure there's not uh, some outliers that need to take it or something. Um, so anyway, uh, so we'll do chapter seven. Um, and then we, uh, we will have um, test two on the 13th of November. So that's a, that's a few weeks off. So no problem. And, uh, and then we'll, 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 we'll probably knock off labs here soon and uh, start just working on the final project. Um, and I don't know, yeah, that's probably it. So I, it appears that we won't have any labs after Thanksgiving. I think that's, that's what the university said anyway. Um, okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but that's kind of what's going down here. And um, it is pretty shocking that we are uh, we're within striking distance. We can see the end of the tunnel. <laughs> All right, okay, so let me... Um, let me get rid of that, and I'm going to shrink me down a little bit here, and then we'll we'll do the IEEE 754. Okay, let's see. Let me pop this up here just a little bit, something like that, maybe something a little long like that. Okay, all right. Maybe I'll drop it down just a little bit. Okay, so. Uh, so floating point numbers, of course, are used extensively in computations, and uh, so we do really need to talk about them. Uh, the uh, there are a number of different ways of expressing them, but the the classic way is to have the number n be represented by uh, a, a, a a fraction. And then that fraction is multiplied by a base to an exponent. And normally, uh, we, we require that the fraction, and we call that the significant, we normally require that it be justified, that it be uh, in, a, in the same order or format. And normally what we require is that there's one digit to the left of the decimal point, or the, the point, the binary point. And then all the other bits are to the right of that, so they're fractional. And then we adjust the exponent to account for that. Now, uh, common values for exponent are 2, 10, and 16. Um, and your fractional portion and your exponent can use any of a different number of different uh, systems. Uh, could use two's complement, sine magnitude, etc. So, um, we we have we briefly looked at some of the issues of of uh, using uh, you know four bits of fractional and four bits of integer and we talked about that a little bit. Today we're going to talk about the IEEE 754 standard. So really what that is about, uh, yeah. So I'm not going to go into this four bit thing. Uh, I don't really want to cover this, and I don't care if you know this or not. It's really not important. The question is, what's the standard format? And this is what's used uh, across the globe. Uh, almost all floating point numbers in computational uh, digital devices are represented if their floating point numbers are in this standard format. And <clears throat> so it's a pretty universal standard. It has been around for a good while. It is an IEEE standard. And it got an update in uh, June of 19, or Ju June or July of 19. So uh, we'll talk about that update at the end. The update just added a couple of additional forms. So, uh, oh, I see. Okay. Well, anyway, so the IEEE 754 format. Now, uh, it's like I said, it's pretty universal, and uh, it is a it 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 started in 1985, but like I said, it has been updated, and it's been updated several times, and the update has changed. Uh, some of this original, um, 
these statements. Currently, we have uh, a number of representations. I'll, I'll, let me, I'll, I'll scoot to the end here and just show you kind of the latest standards, but I'm, I'm only going to talk about some of them anyway. So let's go down to, oh, let's see, how come it did, uh, yeah, okay, here we go. All right, so here, here are the, uh, here are the new formats. Now you can't really see me, that's okay, maybe I'll peek in here. So the, the new formats were, we added a half precision, and then, uh, and then a quadruple, and octuple precision on the binary side. And then there's also decimal representation. So, so you're allowed two different bases in the IEEE 754 standard, base two or base 10. Uh, we still obviously represent the base 10 with binary numbers. And uh, I, I'm not quite sure exactly how that's done. So the bottom line is we're just gonna talk about the binary representation uh, because I've never really used the decimal and I'm not really sure where that comes into play. But in any event, uh, so there are currently now one, two, three, four, five different uh, allowable formats in the binary. And, uh, but three of them, the half precision, which is uh, 16 bits, and the quadruple and octuple precisions, which are 128 and 256 bits, are, are not considered uh, basic forms. So any, any, uh, any compliant uh, in implementation of this must in, implement at least one of the basic forms. And uh, that would be single precision or double precision. Uh, and I think that also uh, does include, uh, let's see, I guess a quadruple is one of the basics, but the decimal 32 is not one. So in the decimal, the only two basics are 64 and 128. Okay, so uh, the way this works out in the single precision, so the, the ones you'll run into the most frequently are floats and doubles. That's that's what's in C, floats and doubles. So floats are single precision floating point numbers, 32 bits, and doubles are 64 bits. But again, there are these new, uh, new um, formats available, and I'm sure that they'll be incorporated into C or maybe already have been. Uh, so the single precision is 32 bits. It has uh, these are all these are all base two, okay. The single precision has 24 bits of significant, and the double precision has 53 bits of significant. The single precision has eight bits reserved for its exponent, and the double has 11 bits. So in the uh, single precision, you get a little over seven equivalent decimal bits, and in the double precision you get almost 16 decimal digits. Now, you can see for really large numbers, uh, you know, like figures involving uh, projecting the national debt and things like that, you, you really couldn't fit it into double precision. That's one of the reasons why these new standards have been created. Uh, and, our, and our exponents, there, there are some very interesting things about the way this is implemented, which we're gonna cover, but I just wanted to show you this. Uh, so the uh, maximum and minimum exponents would be minus, 120, minus 2 to the 126 and, uh, and uh, 2 to the minus 126 and 2 to the plus 127. Those are the exponents available. And um, yeah, so, but what is interesting in this 32-bit single precision, if your number if your floating point number that you want to represent in this IEEE standard as a float has has nine or ten digits, you you will you you can't do it. it. Those that those nine or ten decimal digits, the last couple are going to be are not going to be represented. They're just going to be gone. Uh, you only you only get about a little over seven bits. And now you can have really big numbers and really small numbers, uh, but you are limited uh, to how many digits of precision you can get because remember you only you only have 32 bits that really gives you that only gives you four billion different representations that's it now that's a lot but that's hardly all the numbers uh, in, you know between minus and plus infinity clearly and even in double it's better but it's still not that great if you have a number that, that has 20 digits in it you're you're gonna you're throwing away 
you get thrown away at least four of the de decimal, de that's decimal digits. You're throwing away at least four of those decimal digits. All right, when you put it in the IEEE 754 standard. Uh, I'll come back and probably try and make that point some more. Okay, let me scroll. Oh, golly, that stupid thing, I did the wrong way. Okay, we'll get that. Let's, here we go. Okay. All right, so, um, so I'll move myself back up here somewhere. All right, so let's go. All right, so back to the IEEE 754 standard. Okay, there is a standard format, and this this is it. Okay, so so um, one of the interesting features of the IEEE 754 standard is that it does not use it it, it does not use uh, two's complement at all. Uh, it uses a sign magnitude notation. So what we have in the IEEE 754 standard, we have one sign bit. And then depending on whether it's single precision or double precision, you have some number of bits for the significant and some number of bits for the exponent. Now the exponent is biased, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, and the reason for this is they wanted to be able to sort these numbers um, uh, without having to con take them out of the standard and convert them to some other format in order to sort them. So they want to be able to sort them by magnitude directly uh, all right, so um, one of the things that's that's significant about this is that we're because our computing power. These are the Nvidia's, and I, obviously I don't have the latest one on here, which it just kicks these numbers like crazy. Um, in fact, I'm these are nowhere close to up to date. I guess I should update this this chart. But anyway, uh, you can see we're really going up almost exponentially in our computing power. And one of the things that's happening is, for uh, for many uh, of our of our of our algorithms, we're we're using we've we've begun to switch from using fixed point calculations like for control theory, uh, when we want to control a device instead of um, instead of using fixed point notation, we've really switched kind of to uh, to thinking about doing things in floating point. Because our processors are so much faster, we can we can we can do these calculations now in real time to control processes. So for the world of embedding embedded computing, uh, floating point has become more the standard mathematical uh, modality than fixed point. Uh, simply because our our processors have gotten faster, we're programming in higher level languages that allow us to to handle floating point without having to, you know rack our brains because the language has these features built in and we can just take advantage of the built-in features. So so because of this rapid increase in computing power, floating point is becoming more and more important. And it turns out that if you do a control theory in floating point where you have where you carry along a whole bunch of digits and when you do divide operations you you get big fractional answers versus in fixed point where you where you you you're truncating to you know, your divisions are all screwed up. Uh, th this is really interesting. I mean, we've really, we've really made some changes in the last few years, and so, um, so you do really need to think about floating point much more uh, than you ever did before in in, in embedded computing. Okay. So, um, so one of the things that we see this is the standard. So there are three subfields in, the, and this is this is single precision here. 32 bits. The first bit is a sign bit. Zero is positive and one is negative. All right. And I, I, I have, I am confused by this because it, I, apparently you can still sort the numbers, but I don't know why the negative numbers would have a one there. That seems to be counterintuitive to me. But anyway, um, so the sign bit, zero is positive, one is negative. Then you have eight bits for, eight bits for the exponent. And then you have, uh, and then you have 23 bits for the significant. So that's, and these are binary bits, obviously. So, so if you think about 23 bits for the significant, so that tells you about your precision. Your precision is 23 bits. So that that is really only uh, only eight million 
different di you know, combinations of digits uh, that can be represented. And that means really big numbers with lots of decimal digits. You're not going to be able to represent them precisely. You're going to be throwing away some of the least significant digits. All right. So, um, so those are the three subfields, sine, exponent, and significant. And, uh, and the, the exponent then is base 2, and it's implied. Now, and that's one of the things I, I'm not really sure, I don't really understand about the decimal notation. There has to be some way to, to alert us, and I, I, haven't, I, I haven't looked at the details of that, so I don't know. I've never, like I said, I've never used it. I think most, most of the time we're using binary representations here. So the, so the, so the, ex, the, 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 the base for the exponent is implied to be 2, and it's biased. So what we do is we take the exponent and we, we uh, bias it by 127 so that, so that an exponent of, well, 0 is a special case, but an exponent of, say, 1 is, is, uh, is your smallest exponent, and your exponent of, uh, of 127 would be your biggest exponent, and that may actually also have it be a special case. So there are some special cases, and we'll talk about that. All right, the significant is a binary normalized scientific notation. So it's always in the form of one point x, 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 x. And we have 23 x's. We don't count the one as one of those 23 bits. Now that creates a little bit of a problem. Because if you, all, if you insist on shifting the number so that you always have one as the only and first digit to the left of the point, and then you adjust the exponent appropriately to make that doable, you, what, what happens is you don't store that one. You, you assume it. And since you assume it, you, that means that zero becomes a special case. There is no, uh, zero is a special case. That's what it means. So, uh, so when we take it out of this uh, floating point notation, we always assume that the bit before the point is a 1. Sometimes we'll use the term, uh, uh, well, significant. Sometimes we'll talk about the fractional portion. And sometimes we'll just use the word mantissa. And they all sort of mean the same thing in this, in this sense. So this 23 bits is our mantissa, our significant, and our fraction. I tend to call it the significant. So we have an exponent and a significant. And, it, and the significant is always in this normalized scientific notation. 1 point x, 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 x. All right. So here's our format. So, so our, our sine bit, our, our, um, okay, I see. That's the deal. Yeah. So we, so we take, we take the, uh, the sine bit is used as an exponent of minus 1. So that's how this works. I'm still confused about how they sort, but I guess that's fine. And then, so it's minus 1 to the s bit, which is either 0 or 1. So if it's 1, it's going to be negative. And if it's 0, it's going to be 1. So it'll be positive. With 2 to, the, two to this 8-bit exponent with an offset of 127. And then 23 bits of significant with a 1 point appended in front of it because it's applied. So that means 0 can't be represented. It has to be a special case. Um, the exponent is, the only legal values for the exponent are 1 to 254. 0 and 255 are reserved for special cases. All right. So, and this is the S bit there. That's the significant. And here's your exponent. All right, so here's a number. This is 13.45 in single precision format. So, so if we wrote it in actual binary, uh, and because 13.45 is a non-terminating fraction, it goes 1101.0111001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001001
All right, so here's what we actually store in IEEE 754 format. So notice our, our exponent is 1000010. Zero, 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 zero. It's not it's not like you would think you'd go, well, you'd think you go one, two, three, you you think it would be three, but it, because it's biased by 127, it's actually uh, 100, uh, it's actually 130. This one out here would be 128. And then this would be 2. So 128 plus 2 is 130. And then there's our significant, which would be the, which would be 11010111100100. I'm sorry, this one. It'd be, it'd be one point. And, and then remember, we don't store the, the first one. So we just start with one. So one zero one zero one, and then one one zero zero one one zero zero. So one zero one zero one, and then one one zero zero one one zero zero one one zero, and then in the end, and then we end. Let's see, are there twenty three here? One two three four five six seven. Yeah, there's twenty three there, and notice we we end on one one. That's how it ends up. There are rules about this, the last two bits. Uh, there's, some, there's about six different rounding rules you can use. All right, so here's how it works. The first thing we do is normalize it. So we shift it one, two, three. So that gives us an exponent of three, but we have to add the 127. So that gives us 130, so there's that. And then our significant, we drop the one, the red one goes away. We don't store it, we assume it. And then, uh, so our exponent then is 130, and our man, and, and then our significant is 10101100100. One, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, so forth. All right, and then we have a positive sine bit of zero. So that's why the sine bit's a zero. Zero for sine, exponent 130, and our significant of this. All right. So if, uh, if we want to write minus 1345, it's just represented by simply changing the sign bit. That's all we have to do. OK, now uh, remember that the exponent is biased. So, so we would have written 3 if we didn't have a biased exponent there, but then we wouldn't be able to do negative exponents. And the reason we didn't use 2's complement is because then we couldn't sort them. At least that's the rationale. So it's a little goofy, but that's how it is. Um, all right, so IEEE 754 always wants to have a positive exponent. And uh, this represents the most positive, and 0, 0 represents the most negative. However, uh, you're not allowed uh, we're not allowed to use uh, 0 and 255. Uh, though those are illegal values uh, because they're special cases. So we don't use those. So we only use 1 and 254, 1 through 254. Uh, so our exponents can be minus 126 to plus 127. And we have this plus 127 is needed for the bias. Okay, and, the, and this works out well if you want to sort them and compare them to see whether they're bigger or smaller without having to switch them out of 754 standard. So that's why they do it this way. All right, now the double precision is exactly the same thing. We just have, uh, we just have more bits for our exponent and more bits for our significant. That's the only difference. So. Uh, and we still have one bit for our sine. It's otherwise the same. The sine is minus one to the sine bit. The exponent of the sine bit is the is sine bit times one point, and then the significant times two to the e, with a bias of one twenty seven. I'm sorry, the bias in this one is ten twenty three. My bad. With double precision, your bias is ten twenty three. Single precision, it's one twenty seven because we have eleven bits. So we get. Yeah, we bias 1023. So 0 can't be represented 
again, it's a special case. And when you have an exponent of 0 or 2047, those are also special cases. So our exponent is only in the range of 1 to 2046, but biased with 1023, so it goes minus, um, well, minus uh, 1024 to plus 1023 or something like that. Okay, so here's 1345 in double precision. Uh, the significant is 52 bits, so you have to add a bunch of bits here. And then there's your exponent. And again, it's also 130. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's 1023 plus 3, so it's 1026, my bad. Okay, because it's 11 bits. And you, remember, we have a different bias. That's the reason. Bias is 1023. Okay, uh, now here are the special cases. And this is kind of what, what makes it interesting. So the special cases arise when the exponent is 0 or the exponent is 255. And then we add to that whether the significant is, is all zeros or whether it's something other than all zeros. Now there's two, two conditions. We, we, so if you want to represent 0, your exponent 0, your significant is 0. So for the value 0, and your sign bit would be 0 also because it's a positive number. So basically, 0 is just zero, all zeros. Infinity has an exponent, the maximum exponent, which in single precision is 255, and double precision is 2047. And, but the significant is 0. That's plus and minus infinity. So, uh, well, because you still have a sign bit. So you can get plus or minus infinity. All right, but you can't get plus or minus. Well, uh, the sign bit, I think, for zero has to be a zero. All right, and then, then we have something we call not a number, and that's when you divide by zero or something like that. And in this case, the exponent is maximum, but the significant is non-zero. Now we have one other special case, and this is what's called a denormalized number. Now remember, we said that normally what we do is we normalize our number. Uh, did I do that right? Yeah. So here's single precision. We, we shift it. So if we start here, we shift it 1, 2, 3 to the left so that we have 1.10101100111 and so forth. So that's normal. When we're denormal, what we do is we, 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 we don't, well, we still shift it, but we don't have, uh, we have a bunch of zeros, I guess is what I'm saying. So we don't shift it till there's a, a zero in front of the decimal point. And so why would we do that? We do that because this allows us to store smaller numbers than our than our exponent can uh, can handle. But the downside of it is, so if we insist on all the numbers being normalized, then then we we could have a situation where where, where we would have a one here. Uh, it might be the smallest bit. We'd shift it all this way and everything else would then be zeros. Uh, but you'd have to adjust the decimal point 23 times when you could theoretically have represented the number in a non-normal form with a zero to the left of the, of the decimal point. So the whole point of denormalized numbers is it lets you represent a smaller numbers than you could, but, but you don't have 23 bits of precision of the significant anymore. You have less than that because it's not a normalized form. And, uh, and, but it, it, it does allow us to represent smaller numbers. So that's, that's the point of it. And uh, we'll look at that in just a second. And that's also true for both single and double precision. So those are the special cases. Zero, plus and minus infinity, and uh, plus and minus denormalized numbers, and then numbers that are considered not numbers, like illegal operations. Okay. So, uh, so again, zero is a special case. Infinity is a special case. 
and not a number is a special case, which, which gives you the results of invalid operations. Again, like 0 divided by 0, for instance, and things like that. Okay, now, um, so the special cases, the denormalized numbers, gives us the, sm the smallest normalized number that we could do is 1.0 times 2 to the minus 126. Numbers between this number and 0 cannot be expressed in the normalized form. But if normalization is not a requirement, then we could represent smaller numbers than 1.0 times 2 to the minus 126. We could represent 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.0001, and so forth, all the way down to 22 zeros in our last bit would be a 1. Now, obviously, you lose precision, but you do get a much greater range when you do that, because you add, you essentially stretch your exponent out 23 times. So that that is actually, you know, that can, that could be, that, that does expand the numbers you can represent. So denormalization allows this number, which would be the new smallest number. Note it's not in normalized form because there's not a 1 to the left of the decimal point. And that's your 23 bits of significant. But it is a special case, but as you have to remember that there's not a 1 there, which you normally assume. And so that's why we use the smallest, that's why, that's why for the denormalized number, we have uh, an exponent of 0, but a significant that's non-zero. And then numbers between uh, 1 and 2 to the minus 149, uh, and 1 and 2 to the minus 126 can be represented in this denormalized form. So you can see that really does extend it from minus 126, another, minus, another 23 down, to minus 149. So, however, there's not a lot of significance. Uh, there's not a lot of precision in this because it's, it's uh, just a single one. And for double precision, uh, because we have a uh, bigger exponent, uh, there's quite a bit more, because um, we have, uh, what is 11 bits for the exponent in double precision, I think. Uh, let's see, 11 bits, yeah. And 52 bits is significant. So we even get much smaller numbers there. Okay, so, now, let's talk about how we would do math with the IEEE 754 standard. So one of the things we do is, uh, if we're going to, let's say we're going to multiply. So we have two numbers, F1, uh, or number 1 and number 2. The fractional portion of F1 is, uh, the fractional portion of 1 is F1, and the exponential portion is E1. And the fractional portion of, of 2 is F2, and the fractional portion, uh, fractional, uh, uh, exponent is e2. So when you, if you want to multiply f1 times 2 to the e1 times f2 times 2 to the e2, what you do is you multiply f1 and f2 and you add the exponents. So that's a fractional multiplier and an exponent adder. So we just have to have an adder for the exponents and we have to have a, an actual multiplier for the fractional portions. So what we normally do when we actually do the math we, and we switch it out of IEEE 754 standard and do the math, this is where we often uh, will use uh, two's complement. So many floating point units will convert the IEEE 754 format to two's complement internally. So if you do the IEEE 754 directly, then the representations have to be carefully adjusted because you have these biased exponents. All right, so the floating point multiplication procedure looks like this. The add the two exponents, multiply the two fractions. If the product is zero, then you re to the special case for zero. Else you normalize the product, shift the fraction, and adjust the exponent. And if you get an exponent underflow or overflow, then you generate an exception 
or an error indication because you can't represent those numbers. Or you can denormalize it if it's an underflow. Okay, so to design a simple floating point multiplier, let's say you had a 4-bit fractional portion and a 4-bit exponent instead of what we really have, which would be a 8-bit exponent and a 23-bit fractional portion. So you have to have an exponent adder and a fraction multiplier and then a control unit to kind of make it all work. And you can definitely reuse our two's complement designs from Chapter 4 because when we switch it out of IEEE 754 standard, we're, then one of the things we will do is put it into two's complement form to make our math to make our, our our math easier to do. And you remember when we looked at Chapter 4 these multipliers, remember you had to look at the signs of the of the of the multiple can and the multiplier, and there were all sorts of rules that you had to use. Um, so these are these are complicated devices. Um, so if you if you want to look at the very log code for a floating point multiplier using this uh, the Spartan three that has the the uh, the the LUT fours, uh, it takes thirty eight slices, twenty nine flip flops, seventy two four input LUTs fours, and uh, twenty seven I/O blocks. And if this isn't fast enough, then you have to get another part. Floating point addition. All right, so how do you do floating point addition? Same thing, we have two numbers, number one and number two here. F1, the fractional portion of one, the fractional portion of two, the exponent of one, and two times the exponent for two. So basically, uh, we want to produce a result. And so how do we do that? Well, so the first thing we do is we make the exponents equal so that the fractional portions have the same, uh, have the same value or have the same, uh, they line up so you can actually add them. And uh, so you right shift the fraction with the smaller exponent until it's equal to the larger exponent. So you do right shift to get your smaller exponent up to the larger exponent. And then once you do that, then, uh, then uh, you can see here, so um, let's say, the first number is 1.1 .1 times 2 to the minus 2, and our number 2 is 0 0.1 times 2 to the minus 1. Um, so we would shift the smaller one so it, to make it look like, to make it line up with the, with the larger one so that the exponents would be the same. So in this case, we would right shift so you Take this one to the right, and now you have one one point. Uh, sorry, you have um, yeah. There's an error on this. It kind of threw me for a minute. Uh, so let me fix that. So it's minus. Uh, They corrected it in the line below. Okay, and then I'm going to save it. Okay, now, okay, so now, so we take we take the smaller one, which is 1.1 times 2 to the minus 2, and we shift it. So when we shift it, we shift it to the left, and that adds 1 to the exponent. So now it's 0 .1, 0 0.110 times 2 to the minus 1. Now we have the exponents the same, so now we can add the fractional portions. So we can add 0.110 to 0 0.1, and that's going to give us um, okay, so uh, so so again, you 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 just you just this you just the smaller, which is F1, and you uh, adjust it by moving the decimal point to the left and adding one to the exponent, and that makes the exponents the same, both two to the minus one. Then you add these and you get 
1.01 times 2 to the minus 1. Well, this is already a normalized form. So now you just can switch it back into your IEEE 754 standard. You drop the 1 and you store the, man t the significant and then your exponent then would be minus 1, but obviously uh, adjusted. Okay, so, so procedure for the floating point addition. You compare the exponents, and if they're not equal, then you shift the fraction with a smaller exponent right and add the exponent. Man, I'm... Okay, so, and, and it's a little confusing about uh, right shift and left shift, but when you're shifting right, um, then you're actually, you're actually, uh, you're moving the digits and leaving the, decimal, the, the point in the same place. So the digits are moving to the right of the point. The point is effectively moving left. And that's, it's a little, the notation is, the, the nomenclature is a little confusing. But you move the digits right. That's, what, that's how you shift it, and it effectively moves the decimal point left. So you add to the, decimal, to the, front, to the, to the um, exponent. You keep, you keep shifting until your exponents are equal, and then you add the fraction. And if the result's zero, then you have to set the exponent representation of zero because, that's a, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it becomes a special case if it's zero. And then... Uh, And then uh, if your fraction is overflowed, then you have to normalize it. So you shift, uh, you shift it right, and then you add to the exponent 1 for each shift. That normalizes the fraction. Uh, and then you check for exponent overflow. And if you have exponent overflow, then if it's on the small side, you can consider doing, uh, you can consider doing uh, denormalized. So what do you need to do this? Well, you're going to need uh, you're going to need a comparator to compare the exponents. You're going to need a shift register to shift the smaller number right, and then you're going to need an an adder to add the fractions, and then you're going to need an, a bidirectional shifter to increment or decrement to basically renormalize it, and then check for overflows and special cases. Now, subtraction is the same as addition because we'll, we, can, we switch them to two's complement and do the math, basically. Uh, division, uh, you divide the fractions and you subtract the exponents. Handle special cases, handle divide by zero, handle underflows and overflows. Okay, let's talk briefly about the rounding rules. So we... So there are five different rounding rules specified in the IEEE 754 standard. So here they are. Round to the nearest with ties of even. Round to the nearest with ties away from zero. Direct rounding, round to zero, which is just truncation. Round to round up and round down. That's, that's direct rounding. The default is round to the nearest, ties to the even. So this actually is a little crazy. And I, I don't know how, point, how important it is to go into this, but let me just try and give you enough of a feel so you see that, so you see this, this is kind of tricky. It's kind of tricky. Uh, remember, this is the default, but you can, but these other rounding rules are, they're, they're defined in the standard, so I guess you can use them if you want. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So, so we're, we're looking at this uh, in decimal so that it makes sense, okay? But, so let's say, let's say we, we wind up with uh, a value of 11.5. So, to the nearest ties to even, okay? So, what's nearest in 11.5? Well, it's halfway in between. So, because it's halfway in between, then... Uh, we go to the even 
So that we go to the nearest, but there's no nearest, so ties go to the even. Because you have two choices, 11 or 12. So since ties go to the even, we go to 12. Now if we were 12.5, we'd go down to 12. If we have minus 11.5, we go up to 12. If we have minus 12.5, we go down to 12. The ties go to the even value. Ties to the nearest, or to the nearest, ties away from zero. Okay, so, so 11.5, now we go away from zero, so we go to 12. 12.5, we go away from zero, so we go to 13. Minus 11.5, we go away from zero, so we go to 12. We go to more negative. And 12.5, we go to 13. Now, if we go towards zero, 11.5, we round down to 11, 12.5 down to 12, 11.5 up to 11, or sorry, down to 11, and 12.5 down to 12. Uh, well, up to 12. Yeah, because 12.5 is lower than 12. So we go up to 11, up to 12, down to 12, down to 11. And then towards plus infinity, then 11.5, we're going to 12, 12.5, we're going to 13, 11.5, we're going towards uh, plus infinity, so we're going to 11. 12.5, we're going to 12. And then towards minus infinity, this is what we do. So here, here, are, the, here, are, the op here are the different options. Um, so you can see, again, ties uh, round to the nearest, ties to even is the default. So again, uh, exceptions explained. So uh, these, so like for instance, uh, square root of a negative number returns a not a number. Division by zero, an operation on finite operations gives an exact infinite result. So, uh, so one over zero or log of zero returns plus or minus infinity by default. Overflow, a result is too large to be represented correctly, returns plus or minus infinity by default for round to the nearest mode. Underflow is a re a result is very small outside the normal range and is inexact, returns a denormalized value by default. So you, so you get the denormalized value, which means you lose some of the significant bits, basically. Inexact, returns correctly rounded result by default. So what are some operations that have to round correctly? So here's a bunch of examples. And here are the new formats we talked about earlier. So you can see, um, pop this up. Okay, so what I, what I hope you take away from this um, is that it's a little bit tricky. And when you do the rounding, you, you're you looking at the last two binary bits. And uh, so you basically have several options there. Um, and those last two bits, you have to take that into consideration. Uh, so, you know, so you have zero, one, two, and three. And maybe, yeah, maybe even do the last four bits. Well, last three bits, I guess. Maybe do the last three bits so you can have go to five. Yeah, I guess that's what you do. Uh, and then you then you round those appropriately. It is a little bit challenging, and it can be really tricky to get the right answer. Um, fortunately, uh, we have calculators that will do that for us automatically. Um, maybe I'll do a few examples. I think there were some in the homework. Um, I don't want you, obviously, there's no need for you to become an expert uh, uh, doing, uh, converting uh, floating points in and out of IEEE 754 standards. That's not the point. Uh, the point is to understand how that works and where, where you begin to get uh, fuzzy stuff. And um, maybe on Wednesday, I'll try and, try and give you some examples of that. I, I think most people... Um, don't realize how e how how easy it is to lose lose significance uh, when you have uh, only 23 bits of 23 binary bits of significant. 
It's just not as it's not as many as you might think. And we we when we write a program in C and we specify, you know, uh, you know, a value to be equal to say variable x, uh, and but it, variable x is defined as a as a float as a as a single precision floating point number. Uh, you don't have to get too big before x starts giving you funny values uh, and you start losing uh, significance. If you put in more than seven digits, your uh, seven decimal digits, the eighth one's probably not going to be represented correctly when you bring it back out of the floating point and into an integer. So I'll, I'll demonstrate that on Wednesday. Uh, take a minute to get it set up, and I don't have time to do that now. All right. With that, we will uh, see you on Wednesday.